Hello YouTube. Today I'm coming at you with a video that a lot of you have requested over the last few days and that would be a tour of the Train Chaser Chevy 1500. Um, I'm out here in the rain currently because the rain hasn't stopped since yesterday when I planned to do the video but I'm gonna do it anyway because I uh, ain't got anything better to do. I don't mind coming out here in the rain if I'm gonna make a video for you guys so let's get to it. I'll start off up front and then I'll go around. <clears throat> So this is a 1999 Silverado. It is the Z71 package, off-road package, but there's not a whole lot of off-road to it. It's just got the uh, upgraded skid plates and all that. But uh, the uh, border on the license plate here, I bought this off of Norfolk Southern's website. And then the plate itself, I just got recently over the summer from a NS Railroad employee who ran the 876. So that was nice. Um, as I come around here, there isn't a whole, really whole lot that's custom. A couple, I think it was about two years ago, we put these running, uh, the wheel well plates on, the fenders. If you look back on some of my older videos, you'll notice that those aren't there. These are actually to cover up one of Chevy's biggest mistakes was the rotting out fender wells, which... I'm not going to lie, is one of the biggest mistakes Chevy made. Same with the rockers underneath. They rot out after a couple of years. We actually bought this truck used a couple of years ago. Probably late 2000s. I forget exactly when. We have a... <laughs> an overall rail fan gave that to us. And we had the Silverado. Um, that, that's actually just glued on there. The one that says Chevrolet on this set actually fell off a couple years ago. Of course, I couldn't forget that we have the YouTube sticker, courtesy of a local um, design company here in Bangor. Car on this side, you got the Z71 stickers, and we also Chevrolet also mailed us these stickers for Chevy Truck Legend because we are above 200,000 miles. And it is still going strong. There's a 1500 plaque. This is the LT, by the way. And of course, up top, you have your K4, or is that a K30? K30 CV antenna. And now I'll uh, go into detail on what we've actually done to this truck. So let me just go over here and jump the hood for a second. All right, so this is your, I believe it's the standard 5.3 liter engine, but it's got a couple customizations to it. Um, I forget what air filter he put on here, but that is that has been upgraded. The uh, everything on this truck is uh, motor-wise has pretty much been replaced in the past couple of years. The alternator has been replaced. That's only a oh well, I don't know only a couple years old the um, the transmission went out on this truck when we were chasing an H76 a couple last year of this time about October so that transmission is only a year old <clears throat> um, the rear is completely new the whole axle and everything that's completely new the muffler here from front to back is completely new here's a, an interesting thing is when we bought this or he bought this truck used from a lot um the muffler used to come from the engine off the headers down through and it used to come out right below the cab here right about here and it just went like that 90 straight down and this truck when you were in the cab it was the loudest thing you couldn't hear each other your ears were ringing so then a couple not not long after because we couldn't stand it the muffler was then put right out here and you can see it in some of my videos that came out right here oh look it's a cool Mazda he's cool because he can burn out in the rain nice job anyway then one after uh, we got all the work done put the rear on and everything we uh, he put the muffler back out the rear where it was supposed to be stock but uh, 
I forget how much horsepower the Chevy 1500 with the 5.3 actually puts out, but this one's pushing about 300 because it has the uh, higher air filter and it's also got hooker headers which give it the unique sound that it has. <clears throat> and they're actually beginning to rust a little bit. So this side I think has a bit of an exhaust leak, tiny, so you, when it idles you can hear it a bit. But we're planning to go down to Claver's, our local uh, body shop and auto repair and we're gonna get that fixed. But now here's the fun part. If you look straight down, there they are. That is our Horn Blasters four trumpet train set which you've heard multiple times in our videos. Um, don't remember what model these were. It's kind of a mystery. We've had these on the truck nearly since we bought it, and I don't know what kind kind they were. Now, if you follow the airline up, there's a Y here, and I'll get to Y in a second, but then if you follow the yellow airline up, you go in here, it comes right up into the cab, I've only got 60 pounds of air in right now, and uh, I guess I'll show you in a minute next what we what the, bleh, what the cab is all about. Nothing really special there either. But now if I come back to the toolbox, underneath all this is your air tank. So that comes back in there, and that's where the air tank charges. We also have an extra air line here in case you break, break down on the side of the road and you need a tire or anything. You can fill up a tire. Comes in handy. So back in the cab here. Nothing really special at all. Basic interior. The only notable thing is my tripod sits under the seat. So if there's any surprise trains we need to chase, they're there. Um, here's the switch for the pump. If you can hear that running. There's the airline. If the camera would focus. That's where the airline goes underneath the truck and then it comes up through the floor here so now you'll probably see the air lot the air pressure start to go up here Where you going? taking a video of your truck Man. everybody wants to see it Man. i'm wasting your battery trying to charge the air so now it's going up to about 80 psi we can usually get it up to about 120 but this gauge is going bad so it'll probably go up to about 140 even though that's not really where it goes so while it's charging i'll show you the only really other notable thing we've got in here is a cb which works pretty well surprisingly if we got bigger antennas we could probably talk to trucks farther away but not, not right now we can hear them as far as east banger and probably techo block but yeah but it's good when we're on the road we can talk to truckers or talk to where it's or pretty much anybody h and s have a conversation with them for about two or three minutes depending on where they're at but uh, yeah that's pretty nice it's also got a pa system uh So if I go outside here now, hello, hello. She can scare people. That's right around. Here, let me turn it off. That is right around there. So now I'll get to the other Y. If you go under the bumper here, and let me see if I can do this without turning the camera upside down. There they are. Those are the Grover mini loud thingy horns they're right in the bumper and that is what is currently hooked up right now and then as you can see right over there are the other horns so those are what are hooked up right now in the other video i uh we went by and blew them and the horns were fouled oh geez i thought i was gonna have to get out and clean them but we just hadn't blown them in forever, so now I'll charge them and we'll have to do a run by again and try it again. The yeah. And as you can hear the echo, that's pretty freaking loud. And here is the example of the four trumpet train set. Which is probably a little louder than the uh, Grovers, considering that's four trumpets and not two. But I like it. How much air is up now? 110. 100, that's at 110 PSI. But, uh, yep. That's all there is to it. So now I'll hit the remote start to show you guys can hear what it sounds like.
So here we're going to do the run by. Right now we have the Grover horns hooked up because we already, you've already heard the um, train horns. So now we'll do the mini loud thingy test run by.